Hi everyone, um, Chantal and I have been here for a whole year now, as you guys know from our most recent upload, and we decided to reflect back on that. So we thought of some questions to ask and answer just to see where we are these days and help provide some more context to why we're here in Singapore. So I guess we can go ahead and take this opportunity to officially introduce ourselves. Hi everyone, my name is Chantal. I was born and raised in Texas. Uh, my family's from Mexico, so I'm Mexican-American. And I met Harry when we went to school on the East Coast. And I'm Harry. Um, I was born and raised in California, so on the West Coast. My family is originally from Hong Kong, so I'm Hong Kong-American. And uh, like Chantal said, we met and went to school together on the East Coast, and that's where we started dating. <laughs> so question one, why the initial move to Singapore? I've always loved traveling, and I'm always looking for change. Like, I'm always looking to do something different, where Chantal, I think, is quite the opposite. Definitely. <laughs> she likes routine. She doesn't like change. She likes comfort of just knowing how things are. In university, I always thought, wouldn't it be cool to be able to live and work outside of the US? So I've always had the mindset that we would someday move to another country, and particularly one that is far away from where we were. All right, question two. What has been the best part about moving to Singapore? Uh, for me, I would probably say the accessibility to all these amazing neighboring countries. Uh, Chantal and I have been to about 30 countries now at this point, but most of them are around the US because it's just easier to get to. We wouldn't have to spend one to two weeks off to go travel to these places. Um, but now that we're here, there are so many countries eventually that we'll be able to get to um, that would not require that much thought or planning in advance. So, For me, I would have to say that definitely Singapore is a much safer country. I feel very, very safe being here and uh, being able to experience a completely different culture uh, from many, many different countries here in Singapore. Uh, the food has been delicious, mm -hmm. uh, very good prices, I would say. Question three. What has been the worst part about moving to Singapore? I would have to say that being so far away from family um, has definitely been hard, especially this year in 2020. Um, being away from friends, not being able to contact them as easily, having to coordinate Zoom times. Yeah, the, the timing is definitely tough. It's, it's an AM, PM time difference. It's 13 hours right now compared to the East Coast, so when it's morning for us, it's late at night for them. Question four, what have we been up to this year during the pandemic? So once Singapore went into Circuit Breaker, we started staying in and only going out for essentials. We started baking and cooking more, so we would watch a lot of YouTube videos for new recipes and ideas. Uh, we also started watching a lot of YouTube workout videos. Uh, we did that pretty consistently, not so much anymore. Uh, we watched a lot of Netflix, we played a lot of video games, got Animal Crossing finally. After Circuit Breaker ended, we started going back out again and supporting the local restaurants. We also started to see our friends, hanging out with them, uh, going out to eat with them. And we also started to explore Singapore's natural side. Uh, outside of the city, going hiking, and uh, doing a lot of vlogging along the way. Question five, how does the cost of living compare to the US? For us, we've been living in Boston for the last seven years, so I would say overall it's fairly similar. Um, Boston's not really a cheap place to live in terms of the US, so if we, for example, take a look at rent, we're paying about the same for a smaller place, but more modern, uh, and it's in a much better location where everything is super central. Uh, the other one would be food. So if we're thinking about food costs, I'd say you'd have 
the different options here. So we've got really expensive fine dining, which is more expensive than any of the restaurants in Boston. But then you also have the really inexpensive hawker centers. Now for us, we typically eat at a hawker center maybe once or twice per week. And we generally spend about three to five Singapore dollars per person. The other one would be transportation. Now, owning a car is extremely expensive. So for example, I was told a Toyota Prius, which costs about 30 grand, maybe 40 grand in the US, will cost at least $150,000 here in Singapore. In fact, you don't need a car at all in Singapore. Their public transportation system is amazing and it's very cost effective. We're spending no more than a dollar fifty max to go the furthest place. And in terms of just going to work, it's usually about 90 cents. Question six, what are some of the social norms that we have discovered in Singapore? So one of them is queuing. And in the US, we usually call queues lines. So I've definitely gotten used to calling it queuing. Um, it's very, very normal here for restaurants, even for shopping. There are some times where the queue is just too long, where we're like, it's not really worth it. Uh, but many, many people are willing to wait. I don't think we're at that point yet, a year later. Another one is called choping. Uh, a lot of the food centers, a lot of the restaurants, whenever you are going to go eat, you usually have to save your seats before you go in line to order. So for choping, you usually place maybe a pack of napkins at a table that you pick um, and then you go stand in line to order your food. And not only do people use a pack of napkins, you will often see maybe a purse or a backpack that people actually feel safe enough and it is pretty safe to leave your things at the table to save your space. Like Chantal mentioned, Singapore is very safe, so I would consider that another social norm. It's not uncommon that you find people wandering the streets even late at night by themselves and at any point they don't feel unsafe. Another one is cleanliness. I definitely would have to say that Singapore is super clean. Uh, part of that has to do with, of course, a lot of people know about no chewing gum and also litter. Hardly ever see litter. Whenever we do, we're like, oh my goodness, there's litter. Um, but they're very quick to pick it up. And smoking. There are a lot of designated areas for smoking. So the idea is you won't find uh, any of the cigarette butts anywhere, unlike in many other countries. And graffiti, you won't really find graffiti anywhere unless it's part of the artwork on some of the walls, uh, some of the murals around here. Another social norm is the tip culture. So coming from the US, it's very different. We typically will go to a restaurant and expect to you know, add an additional 18 to 20, sometimes more generous people will put on like 25% tip to the bill itself. The one thing that's great about Singapore though is service charge is included for every meal. And in fact, a lot of places that you just pay with your phone. So there actually isn't an opportunity for you to write down like what percent or how much more tip do you want to add. This includes not just restaurants, but also services as well. So when Chantal goes to get her nails done or if we go get a massage, uh, it's typically just you pay whatever it is and it includes service charge. Another one is cars having the right of way. So usually in the US, pedestrians typically have the right of way. So if I'm walking across like, and there's a stop sign, for example, the car has to stop and let me pass. Here though, we've noticed that it's kind of the opposite. So if we're going up to a street and there's a stop sign even, a car will still be allowed to go first and um, the only opportunity where pedestrians do have the right of way here is if you see one of the blue symbols that shows like it's a yield for pedestrians or if there's a traffic light where it gives you the green signal for um, pedestrians to walk. And there are many more social norms that we've noticed in Singapore uh, but these are just a few that we wanted to kind of point out for this video. Question seven. What kind of food do we typically eat in Singapore? And do we miss any food from the US? Uh, most of the week, it's a pretty good variety. Um, a lot of the times we're actually getting a ton of Japanese food. So we love our ramen, we do sushi. When we go to hawker centers, we typically will get some sort of like wonton noodle soup. There's a lot of cuisine here. Even Western cuisine is available here. Any foods that we miss? Not 
particularly. The only one that comes to mind for me is Chipotle and of course In-N-Out from California. But um, I mean, everything else is pretty much available. So even Shake Shack, if we wanted a burger or Five Guys is here. Question eight, what is transportation like for us? So we don't own a car and we don't plan on owning one. We actually walk a lot because we live in a very central part of Singapore. So it's really easy for us to get groceries, go shopping, or get food. And when we're going further away or when I'm going to work, public transportation is amazing. There's the bus, the train, which is what I take to get to work. Uh, it's very inexpensive, reliable, and efficient here. Question nine, how long do we see ourselves living here? So when we started to think about moving to another country, one of the first things that comes to mind is like, well, we need to actually say that we've lived here. So we thought that two years would be a good minimum. We never really set a maximum um, just because who knows, maybe we really enjoy the country. So we said two years. But that being said, this year has been tough with COVID-19. Part of the reason why we moved here, as I mentioned earlier, is we want to be able to travel. And of course, we haven't been able to do that. So we've considered this past year as a practice run. Mm -hmm. Question 10, where to next? We've only been here a year and we've thoroughly enjoyed it. So at this point, we have no plans of leaving Singapore. So there you have it. Just a few questions that we came up with to help you understand a little bit more about what it's been like for us living in Singapore. If you guys have any more questions that you'd love to hear some answers to, um, feel free to drop them in the comments below. We're always looking for new video content and things that will help educate you guys along the way. Hope you guys enjoyed. Bye.